Now that we know how to consume a curve tree, let's work on producing one. The basic idea is we're going to take in a function and produce a curve tree that describes that function. These functions are going to take in numbers and produce numbers. And we're going to subdivide things by just taking the middle point of what we're looking at. Let's start thinking about how we might construct some curve trees given a particular function. Here's the function that drew the quarter circle we saw earlier. What we're going to do is start by creating some curve trees that approximate this function. Here's our first curve tree. It's just a single segment between the point 0 and f of 0 and 500 and f of 500. That's a very poor approximation of what f looks like over the range from 0 to 500, but it's a start. What about a slightly more interesting curve tree? Here's a more interesting curve tree that splits our original curve in the middle, and so we've got two segments. We can keep doing this, splitting it things in the middle repeatedly, until we get as precise a curve tree as we want. Let's see how to make this into a function that we might be able to write. Here's the beginning of generate curve tree. We're going to take in a function like f and two numbers, here like 0 and 500. Then we're going to keep generating a curve tree until we get as accurate as we want it to be. We'll think about when that's going to be accurate enough in a second. Let's write a couple examples. When we want to generate the curve tree for the function that always produces 1 between the bounds of minus 5 and 5, we're just going to get a single segment that connects the point minus 5, 1 with the point positive 5, 1. If we want to generate the curve tree for the function that just produces the absolute value, again between minus 5 and 5, we're going to consider the point minus 5, which produces 5, 0, which produces 0, and then another segment that starts at 0, 0, and goes to 5, 5. That will produce a v-shaped curve. Now let's think about how to write generate curve tree. Like with writing our quicksort functions, we're going to start by considering output data, that is a curve tree and we'll add two cases because there's two possibilities for curve trees. Here are two possibilities. In some cases, we're going to produce a segment, otherwise we're going to produce a connect produced with two subcurve trees, which we generate by calling generate curve tree. Let's fill in the missing dot dot dots. One possibility is we're producing a segment. We know that that segment is going to start at low and f of low and end at high and f of high. So let's write in those posits. Now let's think about the recursive calls. Generate curve tree takes three inputs. We're definitely going to keep the function the same, so let's fill that in. What's the low value for the left curve tree? It's the same as low. Similarly, high is going to stay the same for the right curve tree. Now all we need to do is figure out what number we fill in for the high side of the first generate curve tree or the low side for the second. The answer is it's just the average between low and high, the midpoint. Here we've filled in the remaining calls to generate curve tree. So far things have been pretty straightforward, but we haven't tackled the hard problem yet. That's when are we going to produce a segment and when are we going to produce a connect? The answer is when we're pretty sure that the segment is right. We're going to decide that that's the case if the distance between the two posins that we're constructing the segment for is small. We're just going to compute that with dist, and we're going to check that it's small enough relative to a particular value. We've picked a moderately sized value, 10, 
Unfortunately, this is still going to construct fairly small segments, so we're going to need to change our first example. We're going to have it go from minus 2 to 2. And now when we run our program, all our tests will pass. If we hadn't changed our example there, it would have generated a curve tree with one connect and two segments, each of which were going along the straight line described by lambda x1. A crucial part of generate curve tree is the termination argument. Why does this always produce a curve tree instead of running forever? The answer is that as long as we keep making the distance between low and high smaller, eventually our function will have to uh, produce distances that are smaller than 10. It turns out that this isn't true for every single function we might be able to write, but it is true for functions that produce nice curves that we're going to try to approximate. So when we write functions like lambda x1, or the function describing the semicircle, we'll always get an appropriate curve tree. Now let's compute the semicircle that we saw earlier. Here we're going to compute the length with generate curve tree, and we'll consider 0 to 500. Here's the result of that curve in an inexact number. We could consider a different curve tree that we might generate if we made that number 10 smaller, say 0.1. Then we'll look at what answer we get with that. Now we've changed this to 0.1, and let's run it and see what answer we get for that same curve tree length. Here we've got a different curve tree, but as we can see, the length hasn't changed that much. 10 was a reasonable number for our approximation. The approach we see here in generate curve tree of repeatedly subdividing things until we get to something that's small enough for some appropriate value of small enough is a common technique that we can see in lots of different approaches. It's appropriate for generative recursion because we need to know why everything will eventually get to be small enough, here smaller than 0.1. And that argument needs to go in the termination statement for your function. Now we've finished writing generate curve tree by writing our termination statement, which describes why this is always going to finish. The fact that the function is continuous is important here, but if you don't remember that, we're not going to worry about it. It's not important for understanding how to write functions like generate curve tree. 